Hey YouTube, Chewy here in the shop. Long time, no post. I figured I'd take the opportunity to do a RoboGames rundown. So here is the robot. This year it was a 120 pound robot by the name of Flame War. Uh, the robot weighed in between 65 and 75 pounds depending on which configuration. Um, this was an interesting build. It was uh, all art and no combat, basically. Uh, this build took approximately 30 hours, start to finish, with 10 of that simply searching for parts. Uh, so the concept behind this robot is it's a uh, likeness, a giant scale version of the Rick and Morty butter passing robot. Uh, I tried my best to copy the look and feel and aesthetic of the original. Um, part of that, part of the hardest part was finding this upper uh, shape. It's, it's very difficult to find a 18 inch truncated pyramid shape. And this, somebody figured it out at the event, but it is one of those a trash can cut down. It's about half height. Um, some some wheels used to go there. So uh, that that was the hardest part to find. I went to three or four different hardware stores. I looked at just about everything I could think of that had about this size and shape. Uh, this was the closest. Uh, unfortunately, the trash can was brand new and cost fifty bucks. Um, out of pocket to build this robot. Uh, especially with the accelerated time frame. It was roughly about $500 out of pocket with I would say 200 of that going to the steel store because you know I bought 20 footers of a lot of stuff. Uh, in addition to that I probably had another mm, five or six hundred dollars of additional parts. There's the radio, the speed controllers, was running all bot bits this year. The um, 18 volt cordless China drill motors. These specifically are Craftsman, uh, whatever, C3, 19.2 uh, volt, I believe they are. Uh, they are running on four inch wheels. These are from Surplus Center. They're Colson equivalents. They're not quite as grippy or as tough. Uh, they're running my Tiki Top Hat hubs. Um, I'm sure you can't see them in there, but they're on the website. They make mounting the wheels easy. It's a pretty standard thing. It's, it's uh, eight wheel drive. The motors are held on with pipe clamps. Uh, this, this piece of tape is uh, a little bushing to try and bump it up. This was the side that was decimated by Apocalypse. Uh, so this three of the four motors on that side took rebuilding after the first fight. And this is the extent of the damage from T-800. It was easily managed to snap and bend this thin wall tubing. Eh, toad sticker drink. So the boxes in the bottom, these are standard off-the-shelf Home Depot parts. Uh, again, I tried to use as much off-the-shelf stuff as I could uh, just to save time. If I was going to fabricate everything from scratch, I would have done uh, like a 16-gauge aluminum um, truncated pyramid. Um, I would have done the boxes probably from, probably from the same just because it would have been fairly easy. Uh, let's open it up. So in this box on this side there is Oyachi switch, power light, and I was running these battery packs. They are uh, cobalt from Lowe's. They're on clearance. Uh, this is I believe three ampere hours of uh, lithium ion cells, 18650. Uh, good packs for the money. They put out 30, 40, 50 amps before they really start sagging. So um, good for the money. They work great for this bot. 
this really didn't tax it very much. But uh, batteries were all in here. It had provisions for four packs of different types. Could have been substituted, but I just ran these, pair of these. Uh, everything is switched here. Uh, then after the switch, there's a pair of wires in the front that go over to the box on the other side. And the box on the other side contains a pair of bot bit 85s. Uh, one for each side of the drive, had no problem driving four motors, was not really taxed. Uh, there's a bot bits 30 amp down below that is driving this 12 volt Makita drill motor that makes the arms go. And there is the fabulous Hobby King T6A receiver and a big pile of wires. There's a uh, terminal strip down there just covered with some tape. So everything was uh, super modular. I, I rebuilt this a couple times uh, just getting to the event. Uh, so there is a pair of power taps that come off of here. I think they're just like 18 gauge and those go up into the upper body. Then in the upper body, there is the other end of that power tap. It goes to another terminal box, terminal block. Uh, the terminal block splits off and does a bunch of stuff. Up uh, there is a DC-DC to drop the 24-ish volt pack voltage down to, uh, I think, 12, because that's what the bot bit 10 amp is rated for. The bot bit 10 amp is there solely to provide BEC for the second receiver. That's right there. You can't really see it. Second receiver. Uh, the bot bits 10 amp is also doing extra duty as a uh, entertainment lighting device. I have a pair of uh, red and green LEDs through a big resistor, so they're just getting full pack voltage with a couple diodes. So in forward, it lights up red. In green, it lights up in reverse, I think. Maybe the other way around. Uh, anyway, you can see that in one of the fights. There is a DC-DC uh, converter that bumps the 24 volt pack voltage up to 30-ish volts for running the igniter for the flame system. And then under that blob of tape is a dimension engineering brittle switch, which I uh, don't use one of those, but I did. Don't do that. Uh, it did fine. I just don't have a lot of faith in dimension engineering's stuff. Uh, in addition to this, there is a servo, and I think one of these bundles of wire, hastily repaired wire repair in the pits. Also, between matches, uh, there's a servo that does the flamey thing as well. Uh, for the arms, there is the uh, Makita drill motor down below, and that uh, goes up through the body. There is a flexible shaft driver thing from Harbor Freight. Uh, to handle some misalignment. And then back there, that is completely... No one will recognize this unless you have one, but it's it's the equivalent of an NPC uh, 2110 motor, I think. It's, it's the right angle 20 to 1 reduction gear motor with shaft on either side. So uh, that's, that's what that is. It's just bolted to that piece of steel and has a couple of pipes stuck on the shafts. They're held on with a screw, a cross-drilled hole in a screw. So the shafts stick out through the plastic, and that was the support on the outside. Um, you can see it, it did a good job of tearing itself in out of there, but uh, it, it worked fine for, for the duty. Uh, Arms were just on the common shaft. Um, they were all made up of uh, bits of steel that I got at the Gorilla Metals. Um, 
everything on the upper body was designed to be as lightweight as possible. Uh, that was one of the reasons for for pulling the motor off the right angle and dropping it uh, down below is that gets some of the weight down. This is also a lighter motor than the stock. It's also much, much slower. So uh, I was getting triple duty out of that one. So yeah, everything uh, down at the base is made out of fairly heavy steel. It's supposed to be uh, loaded at the bottom. Everything at the top is made with plywood or plastic or as thin gauge steel as would hold up. Uh, this is just like quarter inch plywood. Uh, this is the a bucket top. That, that, that's the rest of the bucket. Um, at the first match, I used the, uh, the cutout from this piece of plywood to cover the uh, the bucket hole. I much would have rather had a piece of frosted plexiglass so that you could actually see the lights. Couldn't see the lights during the first match so I left it off for the second and it added a little more visual interest. Uh, so that is pretty much the rundown of the ButterBot and its construction. Radio on. Contact. Not quite as agile as it once was. So yeah, you can see the uh, the pair of reds, and so they actually uh, glow more intensely as so. I don't know why that's not driving the arms anymore, but it's not. So the question is kind of, uh, what should Butterbot do next? He's uh, tried passing butter, he's tried combat. What do you think, YouTube? What's next for Butterbot? Tell me in the comments below. Oot. <laughs>